What's up guys, it's Chad with Living the Van Life up here in Washington. We've got the van pulled into the shop here and we're going to do a little bit of work on it. Everybody loves adventuring in their Vanigans, their Westphalias, whatever it is that you've got, your Volkswagen van. Everybody loves it, we all love it, it's all great. Um, my 91 Westphalia seats four people, so yeah, you can bring a few friends, but what if you want to bring like five or six friends, what are you going to do? Um, well. We've done everything from folding chairs to throwing people on the floor, and it's all great, but you know, when things start getting rowdy, you got people falling over, people doing this, people all over the place. So, okay, well, what if you've got a family of, you know, four kids? How are you gonna bring your kids on vacation when you got a Westphalia? So, did a little bit of research, saw out there that there were some Westphalia vans that actually had a middle row seat. It's like, well, perfect, well, how do we get that? Because as I'll show you here in a minute, my 91 Westphalia has a solid floor. There's no spot for a middle seat. So my good buddy Eldod rolls up with his 85 Westphalia and next thing I know he's got some rails in his floor that is apparently for a middle row seat. So start doing some research and finding you know what's out there. Uh, well it turns out that you can take middle seat, the two seat uh, section from a van again and they've got rails that are inset in the floor that will actually accept it. So in LDODs, he's got the rails, and mine it doesn't. Doing more research, it turns out that actually under the rubber flooring, which is attached or laminated to some plywood, uh, underneath that flooring, uh, there are actually the original bolt holes that will accept the rail. All you have to do is do some cutting on the rubber and plywood lamination and cut out those slots so you can bolt down those rails, and voila, you're ready to go. So, what we did, got on Craigslist, did some searching, we're finding seats for anywhere from 250 bucks all the way up to like 400 bucks for these two seats and seat belts. Um, stayed persistent on Craigslist and turns out we come across them for $45 and they're in great condition. I'm sitting on them right now, I'm going to show you guys, show you guys those here in a second. We've got LDOD's 85 van again, which actually has the rails installed in it from the factory, set up ready to go for these seats. So, got them set up behind us, so what we're going to do is we're going to measure, take some measurements off of Eldod's van and start cutting away in my van and see about getting these seats in because this weekend we're going on vacation and we've got four kids we're bringing on vacation, so we want to have them sitting safe and seat belts, comfortable, ready to go. Alright, so here we are, I've got the seats that we bought off of Craigslist for $45. Now if you're patient, uh, and you're not in a hurry, you can certainly find seats uh, that are cheap like that. We looked around, we found seats anywhere, like I said, from $400 down to 250 We got lucky with some for 45 bucks, and here we are. I've got them laid on their back right now. I wanted to show you the rail system that comes uh, on these seats, um, which match up to the rails that are in LDOT's van, which we're going to take and put into my van. That's the whole goal here. So this is the rail system that we're going to be working with. Um, and if we flip these things up, there we are. As you can see, they're just standard uh, two seats out of the middle row of a van again. And uh, I happen to get the same color scheme that uh, comes with my interior. Uh, the seat belts are all attached. Um, I've got a seat belt piece that I need to attach over here. Um, but the seat, the seat belts are all attached to this. Uh, when the seat's um, firmly attached to the floor, everybody's safe. And then when you're ready to bring it out, then um, the seat belts and everything come with it. All right, so here we are. This is my 1991 Westphalia. Um, I run it with a rug in it. I've got a rubber mat underneath. If we flip this back, you can see I've got the factory uh, rubber laminated flooring that came stock in 1991. I believe they started this uh, in 86 and newer. They started this. So as it sets, I have room for one, two person in the back and then in front I've got one, two person, so a total of four people. So, you know, a lot of families like to jump in these things, adventure, maybe you got a bunch of friends you want to go on a trip or whatever. There's just no options to be able to safely haul and legally haul, for that matter, with seatbelts, a group of people. And so that's why I started looking. But, so in this situation, what we need to do is we need to go over and take a look at Eldod's uh, van and I'll show you the rails and what he has set up. And uh, we're gonna make this thing be a people transporter and uh, we're going to put some rails in here which means we're going to have to measure out, do some cutting, cut out the strips from the rails. You'll see all of that, how LDODS is set up here in a second. 
Um, but we're going to make this thing work and we're going to haul some people. Okay, so here we are over in Eldod's van. This is a 1985 Volkswagen Westfalia. And you can see here he's got the rails come straight from the factory installed. I'm not exactly sure what years these come with, but I know in like the 86 and newer, the American Westfalias uh, just have a solid rubber floor like mine. Um, so here in Eldod's, it's prepared for a seat. Um, we've gone ahead and already taken out the bolts, and then these covers come off. And as you can see underneath here, there's this rail system that is uh, bolted to the floor, and it's equipped for the seat to slide in. Turns out that it's not even a special seat made specifically for the Westfalia that sits between here and the cabinets. It's actually just a standard seat out of a middle row of a Vanagon. Um, so this is the setup that we're going to imitate and mimic in my van. Okay, so I'm going to start taking uh, measurements off of the Eldod's van here and start transferring those measurements over to mine. Lay out the strips. I'm going to take a Sharpie and uh, mark out the strips that we're going to be cutting out. So I'm going to take my measurements off of this solid piece. This is all part of the, the frame and the body. There is some carpet there, but I just want to make sure I press into that carpet and get a good measurement. I'm looking at 17 and a half inches here. Um, so we're going to take that over next door and uh, lay that out. So now here from the width, the width of the channel is, uh, oh, it looks like about three inches by the time we get our cut in. Okay, so here in my van, we're gonna do the same thing that we just did over in Eldod's. Push the tape up into the carpet, make sure it's solid against the wall. And then we're gonna take our Sharpie and we're gonna mark out right at 17 and a half. Now, one thing I did do on Eldod's is I put a T-square on his edge here and lined it up with his rails to make sure that this is square with this. So now we know that we can come off of this and take our line straight out across. So that's going to be our starting reference point. That's our first cut in this direction. From there, we're going to measure over three inches. In this particular instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a tape measure at three inches so I can get my tape flat on the floor. And then I'm going to come out to six. So I have three inch width. And there again, I'm going to take my T-square, make sure we're nice and square on here, and I'll run my line out across, like so. Just to double check that all my lines are square, I um, should have three inches here, I should have three inches here. I always double check, triple check your measurements before you cut. So we looked good there. Um, now we're going to go back over to Eldod's and get another measurement. Okay, so, so far I've got this far to here on laying out my, uh, my cuts over in, in my van. So now what I want to do is I want to get the layout for this over here. So I'm going to take measure from here over to here. And it looks like we're about 11 and one quarter inches. Now we gotta take into account the factory trim here. So the cut and Eldod floor is actually gonna be a little bit in. So I'm probably gonna take off about an eighth inch on each side. So we're gonna call that straight up 11 inches in between. We know this, uh, these rails are three inches wide. So on my van, once we measure from here to here, then we go three inches over. And then we're going to have our layout uh, for our cuts. Okay, now I've got the lines all laid out here. Uh, these are the strips that we're going to cut out. So we're going to run our saw down each one of these lines and pull these pieces out. So the next step here is pulling this strip off. Okay, so... I've got my 
blade depth set to where it will go no deeper than the uh, the wood that is here in the van as to not cut into the metal down below because we don't want to touch that. Uh, worst case scenario, we got a little bit that we have to uh, break off with a chisel uh, before we get it out. Uh, with this particular saw, we're only going to be able to get so close to the cabinets uh, with our cut. Uh, so we do have another tool that we're going to use in order to get the rest of the way to the wall. So we're going to start cutting here. Make sure and take your time. Okay, so here you can see how far we were able to get with the saw. Um, we weren't able to get all the way to the edge, and for our rails we're going to have to cut all the way back to the cabinet across and back down so we can pull that chunk out. Uh, so we have to go to an oscillating tool, which we're going to show you that here in just a second and show you what that's all about. That will allow us to get all the way right up to the uh, cabinet, make the cut along the cabinet, and pull that last piece out. And then we should be able to pull up these strips and we'll show you what's underneath. Okay, so we went to Lowe's or Home Depot for that matter, either one doesn't matter. Uh, but we got what they call an oscillating tool. Uh, evidently it's a pretty amazing tool, I've never used one myself so this is going to be the first time. Um, this is the blade here uh, and what this thing does is it oscillates back and forth. And as you can see it allows us to get much further in all the way up this line to the cabinet and then what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to turn and we're going to be able to cut along this edge here and then the same here and that's going to give us a nice perfect cut right up to the cabinet and back and we're going to do the same on that side. See if we pull this up in the right spot. And I'm seeing some bolt holes, so that's good news. Here and there. And there it is. That piece comes out. Looks like that does it. This oscillating tool definitely uh, saved the day on this whole thing. Okay, so I just went over this. Uh, 
this saw cut with the uh, with the oscillating tool. So the idea here is set your blade depth just barely to where you have a thin piece of plywood underneath where you're not cutting all the way through. Then with the oscillating tool, all I had to do is zap down the same cut line and it just comes right up just perfectly. Um, I was, wasn't able to get perfectly all the way into that back corner, but there it is. And it looks like there's our bolt holes. Hopefully those are the ones that uh, we're actually gonna need. I think they're just plugs, but I don't know. That's a good sign though. It looks like we're right in line with the channel, so good to go. Okay, so once we pulled the, uh, the strips that we cut, uh, once we pulled those up and out, then we had a whole series of plugs uh, that are running the whole way. And those come from the factory. Those are just in there so you don't get moisture, dirt, and debris up underneath your floor. So we're going to work on uh, pulling those out, and that's where those frame rails are going to break. Uh, I'm sorry, that's where the seat rails are going to bolt right in. Okay, so we've got our strips cut out. Uh, we've got the whole underside clean. We've got the plugs pulled out. Now we're uh, ready to install our rails. These are the rails. This is what they look like. Uh, it's basically the opposite um, of what you find on the bottom of the seats. These rails you will find in any van again that uh, came with the middle seat or the third row seat or whatever you want to call it. This is, uh, you'll find these bolted. Uh, in the Vanigans, they're all the way to the left hand side of the vehicle. Um, but in the Westphalia, because of the cabinets, they're going to bolt all the way to the right side of the vehicle. And then your seat will slide in that and the seat actually fits perfectly in between the cabinet and the slider door and you're good to go. So this is the rail. We're going to go uh, set them in place right where we cut our strips and verify that the bolt holes line up. Should be good to go. Okay, so here we are in the van again. Strips are removed. We went ahead and vacuumed up all the sawdust that was left over from the cutting um, so that we're not uh, dealing with that underneath our rails. Here's the rails. Um, we're going to slide them in here, line up the bolt holes, Bolt hole, bolt hole, bolt hole. Looks like all the bolt holes line up absolutely perfectly, which is awesome. Um, we got the second um, rail over here getting prepared, so we'll lay that one in here. Um, one thing to note, uh, there is a little dimple in the floor here that sticks up. There is a hole, a little slot for it, only on one side. So I think that helps you uh, line it up on the right side. This is all our hardware. We're gonna uh, drop in here on these. We're gonna get it all bolted down throughout here and then after that we should be uh, good to go for a seat. We'll also trim up these cuts with a nice piece of uh, uh, aluminum angle, half inch. That should be good. Uh, the other thing that I did do is I did take out this uh, bottom piece of wood in between here so that we're perfectly flush against that. So that's important to do. Uh, then we'll have a nice entryway for the seat to come in and slide in. So, so far so good. It's going good. Okay, so last night we are up till about 1.30. We marked out all our lines, we made our cuts, we got the strips of original flooring out of there, we got the rails bolted in, and then we also took some half inch uh, by 1 16th inch angle aluminum and cut it to length and actually trimmed out our cuts so that uh, you don't see necessarily where the saw marks were and all that good stuff. Um, so it works out really good, it, it gives it a nice finished look uh, as if it came from the factory. Um, the other thing that we got to do is the piece of trim that was down across mine, which I took out in the beginning, um, is full length. Uh, with Eldod's, he has, on Eldod's van, he has a series of tri uh, trim that has been actually cut to fit in between the rails. So what we did is we took my original uh, trim and we marked out where LDOT's trim fits, and so what we're going to do is we're going to cut mine down to match LDOT's, which will eventually match the uh, the openings for the rails and whatnot. So that's where we're at this morning. We're going to get to work on that. Okay, before I go and put the trim on this edge here and here, I'm going to slip this on because this goes down on the front, it slips on like so. One thing we're going to notice is that the this being made for the van without the rails uh, has a slip here. So what I need to do is I need to trim this out. I'm just going to mark it here. I'm going to trim it just behind where the trim's going to sit. I'm going to mark it there and there. Same on the other side. Uh, 
And then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, use a utility knife, trim that part out here, and we'll knock that trim out. Okay, so I just took a utility knife and I notched this piece out here, and that's going to slide in and fit nicely right there, and that allows the uh, space for our seat to slide in right there. Okay, so I've got the uh, these trim pieces all cut and finalized. So this was originally my one-piece trip. And what I did is I realigned everything so I could use the original uh, screw holes uh, and then trimmed out these pieces where the rail's gonna go. So again, my original strip that was all the way across, these are now the rails, uh, or now the trim that's going over the rails. Uh, I went ahead and cleaned them up. I spray painted them black just to kind of refinish them and make them look nice. Okay, so what I decided I'm gonna do here before I actually screw in my screws, I'm gonna pre-drill so that it goes into the metal frame easier uh, and through the wood and the, the rubber laminate. So pre-drill with that. Okay, well there it is, last screw's in, trim's all on, rails are in, trim here, trim here. Um, got this piece cut out, notched out. Everything's ready to go. This is essentially the way a stock 1985 uh, Volkswagen Westphalia comes with the option of putting in a third row seat. So that's what we've done here. And now the next thing is to try out and make sure the seat fits and that everything works. So let's get the seat thrown in and see what it looks like. All right, so we just finished the installation of the rails into the Westphalia. We used rails out of a van again into the factory holes that are actually under the floor of the Westphalia. Got a middle row seat off of Craigslist for $45. Uh, now the only thing left to do is uh, slide the seat in and see if it actually fits. So far so good. There it is, installed. Now we're gonna see if the uh, work does. Nice and roomy here in the back, this is perfect. The great thing is the, uh, the chair actually matches the interior. It's all good, look at this. Plenty of room in and out. Armrests still work, forward and backwards, just like that. It's perfect. The, uh, the uh, seat actually fits snugly in between the door and the cabinets. You don't even have to bolt it down. Now that's the nice thing about it because as you see with this thing slid all the way in, you do lose access to the refrigerator. But here's the cool part. Slide it back. Access to the fridge. Maybe at a rest stop, making sandwiches, back on the road, load up the kids and you're good to go. That's it, we're ready for vacation.